scooping up. I love this product because of the, of the label. What, where, where, where are you? There we go. Yeah, right where it doesn't belong. Well, I like this because it has danger, poison, skull and crossbones, avoid contact with skin or eyes, do not taste, swallow or breathe, antidote, medical care required, physician alert. Does this tell you this is bad new stuff? <laughs> wow, but it works great. Wear heavy, not just rubber gloves, it says heavy duty. <laughs> Do not use with other household cleaners. Now, this works great on rust. However, most carpet technicians, they don't use a bone scraper or a uh, carpet sharp. They use the fingernail. Oh, that's not that exactly, not on this stuff, because if you do this by this evening, this falls off. <laughs> it's underneath. It gets underneath. The fingernail will fall off. The bad thing about this stuff is, if it gets into a cut, it goes to the bone and starts dissolving the bone. And, and that's not the bad part. <laughs> <laughs> I am starting to get it now. That's not the bad part. They have to stop this or it just eat, yeah. eat right through. They take a hypodermic needle filled with calcium oxalate. They jam it directly into the bone. You know when the nurse tells you this will, this won't hurt very much, you know it'll hurt a lot, and then she says this will hurt a lot, you'll pass out an idea. <laughs> So that does a great job on rust on carpet. One of you, who was us talking about where you had used done something and the carpet had turned pink? When any t there are certain carpet dyes that are used. I don't see them as much as I used to, but they are called pH sensitive dyes. <coughs> These pH sensitive dyes, we use them as chemists, where we are we have something alkaline, for example. And when we want to know how alkaline it is, not with the pH here, but we're trying to find out how much alkalinity is here. We'll have what's called a burette. It's a long thing like this and a little thing like this. Got a little stirrer going, and we have a, a dye indicator in here. We'll go a drop at a time until finally the color changes. And we measure how much it took and do our calculations, and that tells us everything. Sometimes that kind of dye is used in carpet. <coughs> And this particular kind is on the neutral, the alkaline side, colorless, or whatever color they want. But when you turn it acid, it turns it red or pink. So sometimes you'll get a problem where you've used brown out or a rust remover, and you have see this red stain. I remember one time going to this hotel, we're doing a workshop, and along the wall there was this huge red stain. And I looked at it, Bill was, Bill Yeager was with me, and I said, I know what that is. They used a rust remover there because it was right next to a water fountain. Hmm. Went out to the van, got my ammonia, dump, go to dinner, come back, it was gone. And I'm confident they tried like crazy to get rid of it. With everything, who knows, they probably had experts out to get rid of it, nothing. You didn't tell them what you did, did you? Probably about two gallons of soap in it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It probably blew up when you yeah. poured it out. <laughs> it probably just blew up foam like that. And so, like I told you, you use non sudsing ammonia. There's two kinds of ammonia in the grocery store. There's the kind that's got detergent in it, and it's usually milky, and you shake it up, and it foams like crazy. There's another one that's the cheaper, and it's clear, and you shake it up, and it hardly foams at all. That's what you want because if you just dump it on there and just leave it, you left the detergent residue. Ammonia evaporates off into water, no big deal. You may never ever run into that, it's just that if that happens, you instead of having a mild heart attack, 